Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna unbox and review the new Ray RGE6 Wi-Fi 6 router. I'm gonna do my full on speed test range test using my following Wi-Fi devices. And this video is sponsored by Ray. In fact, they sent me two of these so I can also compare their Ray mesh system. So I'll combine these together to create a single larger network. I'll do my wired and wireless backhaul testing as well in addition to all the normal testing. We'll also go over the Ray app. So I'm actually excited to test this thing out because I did test out the other Ray system the e4 and that thing was actually pretty powerful for the price it had very good range so this one is supposed to be a more powerful version with a faster speed rating of ax6000 so definitely excited to try this thing out so the power supply is 100 to 240 volts power is 36 watts that's what the plug looks like right here we have an ethernet cable it does it does say it's a cat 5e ethernet cable um, instructions and here it is so we have eight antennas on this thing so I'm expecting fairly good range out of this thing it also has some gaming modes and stuff so let's put that down for a second so that's what the router looks like I believe this is the mesh button to connect more than one of these together and yeah let's see how these fold so I guess these fold like this can I? okay they can't okay so they don't fold side to side as well so it's just like this in the open position this can be wall mounted as you guys can see and let's look at the port so we have a factory reset we have a power port we have a 2.5 gigabit WAN port so it can handle internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits and we have four gigabit ports right here and it looks like you can do aggregation on these it does also say it supports dual WAN aggregation so that's not something I'm going to use but it does say it supports that so let's go ahead and test this thing out so I ran this thing for about a week by itself before I created the mesh system and it is solid. Super easy to set up, no drops, nothing like that. I had a chance to do all the speed test range tests individually at first because in a separate video, I will be comparing it to the TP-Link Archer AX80, which is an equally spec router for the same retail price. Now, after about a week or so, I made sure there were no drops, nothing like that, everything was golden. Then I added the Ray mesh system and I did run into a hiccup during setup of the Ray mesh system. So I originally I set it up via wireless backhaul, but then when I hooked it up via wired backhaul, it worked fine uh, in terms of its side. I could access the internet and everything, but the internet speeds were very slow. So I basically did a factory reset on the secondary one and set it up using the Ray web interface while it was hooked up via wired backhaul and after that it was golden. So that was really the only hiccup that I ran into and it was to do with the mesh system itself. All right, so let's jump straight in to with the results with the internet speed test. And as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. Unless, of course, the router itself is limiting on those speeds, which in my case, this is. So my internet speeds are five gigs up and down, gigabits per second. And the fastest port on this is a 2.5 gigabit port. So as soon as my internet goes in, it gets capped at 2.5 gigabits. And as soon as it comes out, because it only has one 2.5 gigabit port, as soon as it comes out, it comes out with through a gigabit port. So then my internet gets capped to gigabit speeds on Ethernet connected devices. So like my computer, when I do an internet speed test, I get just under gigabit speeds, which is pretty much what I would expect because of the port limitations. However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story because with the Wi-Fi devices, I can go close to this one. And when I did an internet speed test, I did get very fast speeds for mobile devices. So both for Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 60 devices, uh, especially for the Wi-Fi 7 upload speeds, uh, which was very, very fast. Now, this is a Wi-Fi 6 router, but Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 60 are backwards compatible with this, so they work fine. I, I've just noticed that Wi-Fi 60 and Wi-Fi 7 hardware typically do better even on Wi-Fi 6 systems. Okay, next we get to local speed test. So local speed test, what I do is I make my computer into the server and I go from a Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then goes to the main one that's hooked up to the server. And that way I isolate this system rather than relying on my internet service provider or the public speed test server, especially the public speed test server because it can be pretty busy at times with a lot of people and or companies um, running speed tests. So in a mesh configuration, this will result in better speeds than in a non-mesh configuration. So because I always have one router hooked up to the internet no matter what, so 
in the case of a mesh system, because I have a secondary one, well, the secondary one has access to my switch, which is a 10 gig switch, which is hooked up to my computers, which both support 10 gig speed. So I can actually get much faster um, single router speeds. And uh, when I'm at 20 feet away, I can actually also get faster speeds that way. And you'll notice a difference when I'm just testing the router by itself. Okay. So in the mesh configuration, when I do a local speed test, I did get much better speed. So 1944, which is with the Wi-Fi 7 device, which is honestly just absurd. That is incredibly good speeds for something that I'm hooked up to the five gigahertz band. That is just phenomenal. Even with the Wi-Fi 6, he's still getting very, very good numbers. Jumping to wired backhaul, we can see that the speeds are capped to just under gigabit speeds. And that's because this only has one 2.5 gigabit port. So as soon as it goes out, again, capped to gigabit speeds. And as we can see, the speeds are just under that. And finally, we get to wireless backhaul numbers and it had some solid numbers. I have seen better with other systems, but these were still pretty good numbers overall. Next, we get into range tests, which will vary vastly by location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers and walls around, this can all negatively impact your range. Essentially, more obstructions equals less range. So. At my place in 20 feet, inside my place, I should say, at 20 feet away, still getting some solid, solid numbers. At 50 feet outside my place, still getting some really, really good numbers. And at 100 feet across the street, still getting some really, really good numbers. So overall did very, very good in terms of range. And this can go further than 100 feet in my particular case, but I wanna simplify things and just get the point across that, at least in my particular case, It'll work in the front yard easily and it'll work in the backyard easily. And I hope that's true for most cases, but it really just depends on your specific situation. Now for setup and configuration, use the Ray app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. And it's pretty easy to use. It's, it gives you a limited number of options, but it does give you the important options there. So you can, you know, change your Wi-Fi name and password, which is the, your SSID. You could pick a guest Wi-Fi and password. You can make an internet of things, IOT Wi-Fi, uh, separately for your smart home devices to connect to if you wanted to. There's a game turbo mode in there. There's also, uh, you could change like the output of the Wi-Fi signal. So there's three different modes for that. So you could put it on the, the weaker version or the power saving version, or you could put it on the higher version, which I think they call the through wall mode. And you can even set those on a schedule. You can even disable Wi-Fi on a schedule if you want to. So you could say, oh, disable Wi-Fi from, I don't know, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. if you wanted to do that. So it does give you some options. And if you go to the web interface, there are way more options there. There's a lot more customization in the web interface. There's a lot of things to choose from. You could set up VPN from there as well, in addition to a lot of other stuff that you just don't see in the app. So the app, they're kind of focusing on like, hey, here's the main stuff. Here's what we think most people would need. But if you wanna really tinker, you wanna go to the web interface and there, there's a lot of options there. So, and the web interface, I think they did a really good job now to recap, this thing is a very good router for the price. So if you have internet speeds of up to gigabit, this thing is solid for that. And in the future, you could add another Ray router. It doesn't have to be the E6. Now, you should make sure that the Ray router you're getting supports Ray Mesh 3.0, but you could hook this up with the E5 if you wanted to, for example. So it doesn't have to be the same. I personally like getting the same one to create a mesh network out of it, but that is an option. So. If you have internet speeds faster than that, so if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, you can still get this, but do keep in mind that the other ports are gigabits, so they will be capping your internet speeds for the ethernet connected devices, unless you use the aggregation, which I didn't test. Now, sometimes I get comments saying like, can you test this or can you add this to your videos? And unless I get that request like quite a bit, I'm trying to make my videos as short as possible. That's kind of why I stopped doing the range test to go as far because I just want to like simplify it and give the most important information in a condensed form. 
Uh, and that's why when I do setup videos for some of the mesh systems or routers, I do that in a separate video because I, and I don't talk about the speeds and, and other things in that video. I just want to concentrate on, oh, this is how you connect it to a modem or anything like that. So that's my goal is to make the videos as short as I possibly can, which is why I'm going to stop talking about it right now. So thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Way more router videos, mesh videos coming out. I've done a whole bunch in the past. And if you guys have suggestions in terms of like, oh, I want to test this, or if you really want me to add a feature, if I get enough requests, I'll consider it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.